All right, Lagos, let's talk on the glass ceiling as always about the different barriers that hold women back. And we also talk about the practical things that we can do to smash the glass ceiling. Now, when we talk about these barriers and obstacles on the glass ceiling, I often tell you that these restrictions on women are not affecting only women. Men are also victims of the system. Men are being held back too by them. So, for example, when a society excludes women from the workplace, it puts extra pressure on men to work, to earn money, to feed their families. When we tell women that they are solely responsible for taking care of their household and that failure to do that makes them less of a, wim- of a woman, we're also telling men that they are solely responsible for earning money for the family and failing to do so makes them less of a man. So you see, discrimination against women creates negative effects for men. And today, we're starting the glass ceiling by looking at one of those negative effects. So on Twitter, I saw a complaint from a British man who is married to a Nigerian woman. They both live and work here in Nigeria. Before they got married, he had a work permit. Now that they are married and he wants to become a Nigerian citizen so that he can live here permanently and start a family with his wife, he cannot. Marrying a Nigerian woman doesn't make him a Nigerian, according to the Constitution. So he still has his normal work permit. This means that when it expires, he will have to leave Nigeria and reapply to come back in. He has to either travel with his wife or leave her here and hope, hope that the government approves his application to return. Does the same thing happen to a Nigerian man with a foreign wife? Mba. No. Eh eh. The Nigerian constitution in section 26 says that once a Nigerian man marries a foreign woman, she is eligible for full citizenship. Full. So right there. In our constitution, (laughs) we have a case of discrimination based on gender. We have a situation where this gender discrimination is affecting both men and women. Married couples are facing a hard choice. Leave Nigeria or live in an insecure situation where a husband does not have the full rights to live and work in his wife's country. And make it his home. And that's where we want to start our conversation today. I want to talk about the fact that a Nigerian man can transfer his citizenship to his foreign wife. But a Nigerian woman who is supposed to enjoy all the rights of a Nigerian cannot do the same for her foreign husband. Why? I'm asking you, why? Why is this the case? Why do you think the Constitution creates this distinction? What reasons? Do you agree with this distinction? Are you okay with the fact that Nigerian women cannot make their husbands Nigerians, but Nigerian men can do the same for their wives? Why? Why? Why is it the case? Why do you think the Constitution creates this uh, distinction? What reasons do you think it could be? I don't know. I'm asking you. And do you agree that it is okay that Nigerian women cannot make their husbands Nigerians, but Nigerian men can make their wives Nigerians? 01277-0993. 01277 1993. 
01277-2993. There's also WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 0809-5975805. Ngozi, welcome back. Yeah, Sandra, thank you. Yeah. For me, I've always said that the Nigerian constitution, we have a whole lot of the errors or lacunas that the law, uh, lawyers will call it. I don't know as a person why we are still even using uh, those uh, constitutions. Sometimes I feel the most part of the constitutions we are written based on a particular right, uh, culture, culture, or sometimes uh, religious inclination. Hmm. Because if yes, we remember that we are in a secular society hmm. and where we are, a lot of the things in Nigerian constitution should have been amended by now. Hmm. The same Nigerian health care enjoys this place. By the time maybe the things will get open to the media out there, and those countries decide to put their own blood, hmm. we will start shouting. Hmm. But this here in Nigeria now is very clear. Because for me, I don't see the reason why a man who is married by a woman that is a good citizen of that of a country mm -hmm. will not enjoy the same privilege with the wife. Mm. I don't see the reason. Even from Igbo land where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. if a man marries a woman, mm. automatically you are a member of your wife's family and kindred. That's the way it's done. So I don't know why our constitution is biased. Probably because it's a woman that is involved. I don't know either. Because he thinks for us at all. Thanks for calling to share your thoughts. It's not good for us at all, she says. Olua Femi Nikotsu says that this should not be allowed. Olua Femi, why do you think it exists in the first place? Uh, I think um, those who wrote the constitution at that time, I think they were having this um, black only to track your masculinity coming to place okay. at that point in time. Because I don't know why a woman should not be allowed to make her own husband a legal citizen of that particular country, mm. which is Nigeria in context. Mm. Do you understand me? Mm. Like, since both of them are married to each other, mm -hmm. she's allowed to make sole decisions based on whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. The husband can decide, okay, if I want to become a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm -hmm. yes, I want to become a citizen, yes. You understand? But mm. I think it's a review of the constitution to make amendments to what you say. Mm. And let's be true to ourselves. There are lots and lots and lots of things in that constitution whereby they don't they don't pertain to what they have now. And there, are, there are some things that are just a no no. There are lots of lots, lots of them in this constitution. Mm. So I, I think um, those those that in, in course are trying to be misogynistic to some extent. Mm. Using the old the man is the head of the family, mm. all those them. Okay. I can't um, ideas. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand why why a man can make a foreign woman a citizen of, of Nigeria. Why mm -hmm. a woman is not Nigeria? Why a woman can't do that? I don't know. It's quite bad. It's quite bad. Okay. I, I, I was so, so happy when I heard that. Hmm. So bad. Olua Femi, thanks for calling me. Let me talk to uh, Sir Basomi. I, uh, what? They still type in the name. What's your name, sir? Okay, my name is Bahomi. Bahomi, all right, welcome. Yes. Okay, um, I think um, I actually saw the tweet from the mm -hmm. young from the man. Guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw it and I felt, you know, a lot of people online, mm -hmm. we, are, we are all surprised, mm -hmm. you know, to know that this is actually our constitution. Mm -hmm. You understand? And you got a lot of support mm -hmm. and uh, i'm so happy that you brought up this topic today because i think some of us don't know mm. just like the one of a uh, police women mm -hmm. uh, so taking permission to get to married mm -hmm. yes yeah, mm -hmm. these are some of the patriarchal uh, mentality we transfer from our culture okay. to constitution Okay. So we the secular society, like the previous scholar said. So we should. It's good that we are having this conversation. Okay. Because it is only through this conversation that we, we can make the necessary change. Okay. You understand? Okay. So we, I don't. We, some of us don't know when they put up some of these uh, laws, but it needs to be changed. That is why we have the mm. legislation. 
legislature, and that is why they are permanently employed. We have the legislature at every time. Mm. They look at our laws and try to perfect them mm. because it's actually very. I feel bad. <laughs> I know. I actually, I've heard of one American guy. Okay. He works in Nigeria. He married a Nigerian. Nigerian. This guy doesn't like the tax he's paying to his country. He wants to renounce his citizenship. You understand? Mm. Because our tax system is better for him. Okay. You understand? He lives there. He has lived there for many years. Okay. So he cannot get the so for citizenship. Mm. You understand? Because he married a woman. So, because he married a woman. Mm. It's so painful. And so, a lot of them are in this country. In fact, there are some people that are born here. I know somebody, a Syrianunian. She was born in this country. Okay. She could not get admission in this Nigerian university because she could not get state of origin. She doesn't. She could not get state of origin. Mm. And they are telling her to apply as a foreign student. She has not been to Syria alone before. <laughs> You understand? That's a different that's conversation that's entirely. But thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. Chris, you know, Coco Michael, you support this partially. Why? Good afternoon. Why do you support this partially? Okay. Uh, when I was uh, in my two days, I was a scholar of professionalism when we did our government Mm. So, the, and it's defined as an act of the act that made up the constitution, where the constitution is derived from. Mm. Talking about the people's way of life, mm -hmm. the, culture, the culture of the people, mm -hmm. and also the uh, history mm -hmm. of the people. Also. Okay. So, historically, I'm a little man, uh, for many good things to be precise. Uh, in my own place, uh, we, we did our daughter in marriage. And after giving the woman in marriage, automatically she belongs to the thousand soul. Okay. I think uh, the, the people who the constitution, mm -hmm. actually, they live, they live in, what, in this very act of uh, the woman after marriage, automatically belongs to the thousand So as a result of that, that actually who they don't go to give the men food more edge over the women as we see today. So that's all right, Chris, thank you so much for calling to make it. You know, Chris is not alone. Chris is not the only person who supports this uh, this thing. And I've spoken to people like Chris who supports this difference in rules. And they usually give the same reasons. They say, for example, foreign men should not be given citizen by marriage. Otherwise, they will take uh, opportunities that should be going to Nigerian men. I've heard that. But nobody is saying that foreign women who marry Nigerian men and get citizenship are taking opportunities from Nigerian women. You know why? Because they don't expect women to have opportunities. So you see the issue. You see how it exposes the way that a lot of us view society, including the people who wrote our constitution. Basically, the idea is that as a society, we are this big pot of soup, a big pot of opportunity. But the only people who can share from the pot are men. The men are given a share. They take it home to their families. And if a man marries a Nigerian woman or a foreign woman, it does not matter. It is still the same number of men sharing that pot of opportunity soup. But if a woman marries a foreign man and he's allowed to collect his own share of the soup, what happens? There's one extra man sharing soup. That means that there's less soup to go around. And we cannot take it. We will not take it. We must not allow him. And if we truly believe that men and women have an equal stake in the society and an, an equal shot at opportunities... We will treat them in marriage the way that we treat men. But we treat women marrying foreigners differently because we know that men have more rights and privileges and opportunities than women. We've had officials of the immigration service 
say as much in the past. I'm not kidding. We've heard some of them say, look, if we give foreign men the right of citizenship like foreign women, they will now be able to struggle for every job and every business with our people. With foreign women, we don't have that problem because they will stay in their husband's house. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. And then you, you heard Chris say that, well, a husband, a, a wife belongs to her husband's country. A husband does not belong to his wife's country. That's another reason also given. And that's something that is carried over, like Chris said, from his culture as an Igbo man. Here on the glass ceiling, this principle has come up before. It came up when we talked about women not being allowed to inherit their parents' property. It also came up when we discussed state of origin. Many of you said that your culture doesn't allow women to inherit property from their parents because when they marry, they will leave the community, they will join their husband's community. But by the way, we have to point out that even when a woman joins her husband's community, she is not treated like a full member. But that's by the way. The point is, our cultures give this idea right it give us this idea that when a woman marries she's no longer from her place she's now from her husband's place and that's part of the reason why we can have a constitution that doesn't give a man nigerian citizenship if he marries a nigerian woman because as far as our cultural bias is concerned that woman is no longer a nigerian not fully but isn't that wrong? In this day and age, does it make sense to still view it as if a woman is no longer a full part of her community or her country once she gets married? Should we not have gone farther as a people? Because let's face facts. Let's face the reality. In most families, it is still the daughters who take care of the parents. Even after they get married, you still see married women doing their best and being involved in the affairs of their birth family. These days, when a woman gets married and goes to a faraway village and doesn't see her family again, those days are gone. Those days are gone. These days, women are involved. Women remain part and parcel of their families and should be recognized as such. Women remain part and parcel of their country and sh they should be treated as such in a marriage. But those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. I want to hear yours. How does your village or your community treat women who marry men from elsewhere? Are they like Chris and Chris's people? Are they seen as no longer being members of the community? Do they inherit property? Do any women inherit property in your culture? Anyone? Do you think the way we treat married women in our cultures affect the way we view citizenship at a national level? 01277-0993 01277-1993 01277-2993 01277-3993 hello. Hello, good afternoon. You support that Nigerian women should not be able to give citizenship to their Nigerian husbands, to their foreign husbands? Yes. Okay. And this is my reason. Now in those days, women can go out to the field and get jobs. But now if you don't push your wife for foundation, you can't get job anymore. So we are not living the women's world. People have been watched most of your program. You have never seen for men before, for women. So my point is this. When a woman now married a foreigner, and a foreigner man becomes a citizenship of Nigeria, in the first place, in his own country, is better than Nigeria country in one million times. So what is that thing that the man saw that he wants to become a citizen of Nigeria? So we should ask ourselves a question. I will not say much on this, but my point is this. The way women now, they are now going. They want to take over all our lives so that we will not be the one in the house. We are not, Nigeria is not a woman's world. It's a men's world. And you can say your own, and this is my own opinion. That women cannot take all our lives at here. Men are now jobless. Women are taking over bank industry. They are taking over radio station everywhere. Good evening. All right. Good evening, Olumuiwa. <laughs> Let me talk to 
uh, somebody else that we have on the line now. Who's this? Let's see. Who do we have here? Uh, we have got uh, Ronke. Hello, Ronke. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Ronke. Good evening. Oh, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just taking blown away by what you were talking about because this actually has happened to me recently. Okay. Somebody else I told that uh, you're, you're Yoruba and, you know, my husband is a robot. Hmm. So if, if war breaks up now, where, where are you going to go? So now I, I, I was told without looking at family, I can't understand the question. <laughs> I was like, why would we have a war and why would the... Uh, where would I go to? Why is it in the context of where would I run to? Mm. I don't understand. Mm. And, it, and I guess I, this was an excited woman with so many certifications and everything. Mm. And I was like, in 2019, we are, are still having this conversation of where where you are from, you're, you're supposed to inherit now, live where you are coming from and inherit where you are going to. I, I really don't understand. Uh, when is it going to end? When are we going to stop thinking this way? When are we going to be objective about the situation at hand? Okay, we've gotten married now. It doesn't have to do with, okay, it's a man. I don't know. <laughs> it's quite a lot, isn't it, Ronke? Thanks for calling to share your thoughts. Okay, let's uh, pay some bills, shall we? We'll come back and we'll keep having this conversation. I told you that the Nigerian Constitution, Section 26 specifically, says that a Nigerian uh, man can make a foreign woman a citizen after marriage. Well, a Nigerian woman cannot make a foreign man citizen after marriage. A Nigerian male citizen can confer his citizenship on his foreign wife, but a Nigerian female citizen cannot confer her citizenship on her Oyibo husband that is a foreigner. Well, he's Oyibo, so he's a foreigner. Maybe he's not even Oyibo, maybe he's South African or Ghanaian. But you cannot make him a Nigerian citizen after you marry him. How does your village or community treat women who marry men from elsewhere? Because that's where it starts from. Are they seen as no longer being members of the community? Do they inherit property? Do any women inherit property in your culture? Do you think we, th the way we treat married women in our cultures affects the way that we view citizenship at a national level? I'm Sandra Ezekwesli. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. The glass ceiling happens every Wednesday at 4. Any episode you miss, you can catch on our podcast. We have a podcast. It's called The Glass Ceiling Show. And you can listen to our previous episodes, which will continue in a bit. Hard Facts will be right back.
Yeah. This is the glass ceiling, the glass ceiling. on hard facts. hard facts. On the glass ceiling today, we're talking about the barriers that hold women back and how they affect men. I say affect men because actually they do. When we tell women, don't go to work, we're telling men, now you go work, die. When we're telling women you don't need to earn money, the only person whose job it is to earn money is the man. It means that you will die early. I'm talking about this because I saw a complaint on Twitter from a British man married to a Nigerian woman. They both live in Nigeria. They're both working in Nigeria. Before they got married, he had a work permit. Now they're married. He wants to become a Nigerian citizen. So that he can live here permanently and start a family with his wife. But he cannot. Because marrying a Nigerian woman doesn't make him a Nigerian. And our constitution says so. I'm Sandra Ezekosili, by the way. You're listening to 99.3 Nigeria Info. And I said that this thing, it doesn't start with the constitution. In fact... Chris, one of my callers, called in and says he supports this thing because as a core Igbo man, when you marry a woman, she's no longer from her place. She's now from his own place. Olumiwa also called and said, women are taking over everywhere. They're in the bank. They're in the radio station. They're everywhere. They should not take over this one too. We need to leave them alone. It's only the men that should be doing all these things. So yeah, we have that. And we have other supporters as well, including an immigration's boss, who once said that if we give men, if we give Nigerian women a chance to marry Nigerian men and they become citizens, opportunities will shrink. Nobody is saying that about Nigerian women who marry Uyibo men. But they're saying that about Nigerian women. Uh, Ni- nobody's saying that about Nigerian men who marry Igbo women, but they're saying that about Nigerian women who marry Igbo men. So again, I'm asking, how does your village or your community treat women who marry men from elsewhere? Are they seen as no longer being members of the community? Do they inherit property? Do you think the way we treat married women in our cultures affects the way that we view citizenship at a national level. Our numbers are 01277 0993. 01277 0993. 01277 1993. 01277 2993. And 01277 3993. I can say 01 or I can say 01, whichever is easier for you to hear. 01277 1993. 01277. 1993 Peter Monze says Nigerian men are easily threatened. Huh? What has that got <laughs> to do with this? You saw Sandra. Mm. Let me tell you something. Even in that law you put now in our constitution, uh. it is it is primitive. It is it is long overdue for review. Mm. It, uh, you see selfishness there. Mm. You, see, you see repressiveness there in that law. Now, what you are enjoying from other people, you don't want other people to enjoy from you. Mm. Why are Nigerian men like this? They will put culture in this 21st century that everything has changed and they are still holding on to that culture because it is a culture that oppresses and suppresses women mm. because they don't want to see women to be partner in progress. Mm. They feel anything that should make a woman to be at par with the men mm. should be of health, provided it suppresses the women. Mm. It's very, I feel very bad. I'm not married yet. Okay. But I am feeling very bad to hear that this is in our constitution. It is. Let me, now, let me say it finally. Mm-hmm. I want to suggest mm. that there should be a retaliatory men. Okay. Oh, I think we lost the connection to Peter. That's unfortunate. Ibrahim Insulera thinks everybody should be allowed a chance to become a citizen. Why, Ibrahim? Why? Good afternoon, Good afternoon Ibrahim. Yes, I think we should be allowed. But um, there's such an equal opportunity to them. They take the same to the women's husband. So if 
this um, Nigerian woman is married to a foreigner, so mm. not the same way such a um, uh, Nigerian woman as married to a foreign person would be allowed to come to the country. Same should apply in our own country. But I think the problem is we have this uh, mentality of you are a woman, it belongs to your husband's family, not the government belonging to your family. Mm. And I suppose that's the same reason we have uh, women having to change their names after getting married. Mm. Mm. And, um, so they, I think that's the same mentality that has been extended. And carried over into a national law. Mm. Yes. So I, for me, I, 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 I suppose that it, it, I would rather they allow man the same opportunities that the woman would have if she goes to their country. Yeah. All right, Ibrahim, thank you for sharing that thought with us. Nicholas says, for me, that inclusion in the Nigerian constitution is very discriminatory. It can be termed as hate speech against women. The legislature should look into it and remove it. It makes no common sense at all. Okay. Ben from Shomolu says, my question to all Nigerians is, is it time for us to assemble all those who wrote the Nigerian constitution and ask them, ask them their intention of putting this uh, clause and putting all the other flaws in our constitution into the constitution. All right, Ben, thanks for that message. WhatsApp is 0809-5975-805. Abedjo is in transit. Hello, Abedjo. Welcome. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. This discussion, like so many other things in Nigeria, is very depressing. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is a human being <clears throat> because that person is a woman mm. who is born into this life with a deficit, with the reality of doing catch up. Mm. Is it fair? This person breathe, think, walk, with blood running through their veins, so have they like you as a man? It's because you are a man, it's because your computers are just a little different. And you are subjecting that person to the background. Men should think. I am not holding anybody against their thoughts and beliefs. But please, think. Don't disable a little bit. Just imagine it. If you were in that other side, if you were that other side, how would you? Just think and ask yourself questions. Thank you. Abedjo, thank you so much for calling. My final call for now is Emmanuel because I want to talk about this cultural angle some more. Eh? Emmanuel in Ogun State says that this is a result of the mentality of men. Okay, explain, Emmanuel. Yeah, the, yeah, the reason why I say is, uh, is the mentality of men because, you know, the, uh, the, the Bible, the Bible make, 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 it, uh, make it clear that you know, as a man thinking in his heart, so he is. Okay. So the, the truth is that, you know, because of uh, the way our forefathers have been dealing with the women, mm. the way they place the women. Okay. So because of that, that was when they, they that was the mentality they took to the national court and they begin to make some kind of law that is affecting the women. Mm. Because we are, we are the same. The white doesn't look at the Look at the men over there, or their women over there, the way we look at our women here. Mm. They respect their women, they honor their women. So, what, in fact, most, most of the, their, const their constitution there, you know, favor the women more than the men. Mm. So they respect the women. It's, it's just about value culture. Mm. What value here is the men, mm. not the women. And it is wrong. It's turning everything around because you can see that some men today, you know, in, in families, Women take care of their families, even though they are married somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They take care of their family, they take care of their, their siblings, mm -hmm. their parents, and everything. More than it's the men mm -hmm. that they are look, looking up to. Mm -hmm. So if they should be able to turn the constitution, amend the law, it will favor, you know, every one of us. So that things should be able to work, you know, the way it should be. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel, for calling. And that's the last call that I will take for now. Because let's look at this cultural angle some more, shall we? We talked about how our cultures often say that a married woman now belongs to her husband's place, right? And so no longer has rights in her place. But there's another side to that coin. Our cultures often say that a man never becomes a member of his wife's community. 
In fact, the reason why so many cultures don't allow married women to inherit property is because they don't want husbands to get access to property in their wives' places. How often do you hear about a man getting a chieftaincy in his wife's village if he's not from there? How often does a community induct its son-in-law into its societies if he's from some, somewhere else? Think about it. Yet married women often join clubs, societies in their husband's homelands. So it's very clear that our cultures exclude men from becoming members of their wives' communities. Now, some will say that this only happens because men don't want to be a part of their wives' communities. Uh -uh. Now, I'll, I married my wife. My wife did not marry me. Uh -uh. You hear that very often. But what does that really mean? No, this is a serious question. What does that really mean? We're saying that marriage is a transfer of control and, on, and ownership. Marriage is not an equal partnership. Because if our cultures saw marriage as equal, then we would be saying, I married my wife and she married me. We would be saying, I'm from my wife's place and my wife is from my place. But that's not what's happening. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why? If it is so good for a woman to now be from her husband's place, why are men not excited to be from their wife's place? Serious question, are they ask who? If it is so good to switch your allegiance and women are encouraged to do it, if it's a good thing to do that, and if men and women are equal, why are men not encouraged to do the same thing? Talk to the average Nigerian man, single, married, woman, man, about a wife belonging to a husband's community. Most of them will tell you, ah, it's perfectly normal. Some will tell you yes, but she still belongs to her uh, own community also. Some of them will. But now flip it around and ask the average Nigerian man or woman whether a man should belong to his wife's community after marriage. Most of them will tell you, God forbid, never. And I'm asking why? <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to be outraged about the constitution. How? Who are these people that wrote these things? But let me ask you personal questions. Why? What is so wrong with it? And if it is wrong, why do we want women to do it? What is so wrong with it? And if it is so wrong, why do we want women to do it? Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Hello. What's your name? Hello. 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 Yes, you're talking to Sandra. Go ahead. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. That line is not very clear. So I don't think I'm going to be taking calls from that line. Hello? Hello, yes. Joshua, welcome. Yes. Um, I don't think that uh, it's been supported by the Bible. The Bible? Yes. I am telling you that when the man gets married to the wife, they become one place. So what, what she has, she can give you. What you have, you can give you. She can a free word. Because as a man now, you can also... Because you can take care of, the, of your in laws also. You can take care of the rich laws. You can take care of the wife and your wife also. Uh, so the same, it should be the same too. Mm. Okay, so you're saying even the Bible supports it. So you don't understand why it's not like that. One place. One place. Okay. All right. So he's saying that even the Bible, Joshua says, even the Bible supports it. The Bible says the man and the woman become one. So he doesn't understand why you can't be from your wife's place and you and your wife cannot be from your place. You know, vice versa. Huh. Interesting. Val says it's a question of value system. What do you mean, Val? Um, hello. Good evening. Good evening. What do you mean by value system? Um, 
I, I see it as a function of international law, okay. culture, practices, and value system in general. Okay. Now, the system uh, that we find, like for instance, in the, uh, abroad, people who go there to marry there and uh, give a citizenship. Mm-hmm. The situation itself here was better. People will not be going outside to get married to foreigners. Mm. One example. Now, in our own area here, my, where I'm from, whether a woman is married or not, the woman has access to inheritance. She's respected in her hometown. Good. You can investigate it. You can investigate the river state, the Calabari. Oh, yes, 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 I know. Calabari culture. Yes, I know, I know. One I know. has right. Yes, true. True, okay. true. Yes, so that. Yeah. Okay. So, as you see, it depends on where you find yourself. Mm. Culture, value where you find yourself. Mm. Now, what I, what I want to suggest is there might be room for modification in our constitution. Mm. There might be room for modification to modify certain things. Mm-hmm. Modify it based on our own practice, based on our own processes, mm-hmm. based on our own culture, mm-hmm. based on our own belief system, based on our own environment. If we begin to uh, copy what the Western world are doing, mm-hmm. we find ourselves into crisis. I remember the Western nations as even giving kudos to Africa for upholding its tradition, culture, and value system. We are trying to modify theirs now because theirs is like it's going out of hand. We must try to hold on to what we have. The only thing we can do is there's room for modification. Those areas where are not very favorable, we can see how we can come together and harmonize things. Like in the East now, I heard leaders came together to remove some certain things that are no longer beneficial to women. These are some certain um, that have to be pursue and all that. Mm. And it's a function of we coming together and deciding together, how to move forward. Deciding and modifying. But yes. if you now say, let us adopt. Let us, we are looking at that, we are cheating the other agenda, because then it becomes a problem. There's room for modification. All right, Val, thank you for calling to share your thoughts. Peter says in Benue, women are more supported culturally. Be- tell me more, Peter. Yes, good evening, Sandra. Good evening, welcome. I think uh, our culture supports our women, especially in my place. I am from Fenway State. Okay. And when the woman get married to my community, mm-hmm. automatically ha- she has an inheritance in my place. Okay. She, have, ha- she should be given a farm land. Everything that belongs to the husband mm-hmm. belongs to the wife. Okay. So I think our, uh, our, our culture, our culture is, is, is not, uh, you know, it's not against women. Okay. And we should be careful in borrowing a foreign culture. Okay. Our own culture is what makes us unique, and mm-hmm. we should value it, Sandra. Mm-hmm. Yes, we should value our culture. That is what makes us unique to any other person in the world. Mm-hmm. So we should value our culture. We should not borrow. The borrowing of culture is what is making our society more so racist these days. You see, women are not, some ladies don't have respect on husband and, and, and other people. Our culture don't say women give respect a lot to the, to the men. And you see, who, you, you see good ones, those days you don't find out breaking homes and all that. But if you look at this day, when those little marriages don't get broken at any time, it's as a result of the borrow of culture or this Western culture. So, don't, so let's all value our culture. It's what make us unique and our culture take care of all these things okay the culture the culture the culture so value the culture what if the culture is a toxic one what if you come from a place that where women are not treated right is that a culture we still want to value uche in surulere blames religion and culture how are they taking the blame here uche okay um the religion in terms of uh, the muslim faith where they believe that the, the women are equal, not the victim or second class citizens. So now, not just, they can never hear anything that has to do with equality, gender equality. Mm. So they can never. And secondly, cause of school, you know that religion is fully reflected our culture. Down in the south, where you have the Igbos, um, they believe that too, women are not They believe that women should be acquired and they don't have any food. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. You know the funny thing about this thing? It's something that most of us, both men and women, have simply just accepted. Oh. 
We've never questioned or analyzed it. If I'm not raising it today on the glass ceiling, you will not have time to pause and think about it. You know that, yeah? We've just been trained to accept it as a given. Yeah? From childhood. After all, is that not the reason why a woman is expected to leave her surname and take her husband's surname? We talked about that when we discussed the pressure to have children. Remember, especially sons. We talked about the idea of preserving the family name. Basically, as a people, we've accepted without questioning it that women will give up their family name when they marry, while men preserve theirs. It's the same way we've accepted without question that a married woman gives up her place of origin huh? while a married man retains his own. We've basically, as a society, accepted that marriage means that a woman loses big parts of her identity while a man preserves his. And that's why most men will not accept the things expected of women in marriage. If you had to make a man accept the things that women have to accept in a marriage, they would not. So here's a question for you. My last question, and then we wrap up the glass ceiling today. If you are a married man, would you accept no longer being a member of your community and becoming a member of your wife's community? Would you accept no longer being a member of your community and becoming a member of your wife's community? How involved, for the, for the married women listening to me, I want you to call me as well. How involved is your husband in your community matters? Does he consider himself a part of your community? Do your community people accept him as a member? Do they involve him when it comes to sharing benefits? Last question on the show today. George, hello. Uh, hi, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Yes. Um, for the last of community, I'm married. Okay. Yeah, I have a daughter. Okay. If I look at it from the angle of how I want my daughter to be treated, you know, I wouldn't take, I won't take this. Okay. Uh, yeah, and if we take it for those using comparison with those in the U.S. and stuff like that, mm. let's not forget, less than 100 years ago, the women also didn't have rights. So it was agitation and struggle as well. Mm. So it didn't just start all of a sudden. And to be honest, let me be fair to those who wrote the constitution. After the time they were writing it, mm. it's right and it seems okay and it works. But one thing about that is that there is steady growth, there is steady improvement in quality of life, especially at the equality of all mankind. Mm. So we have to put that into consideration as well. Like, after the time this news or the constitution was written, mm. it was okay. But right about now, things have to change. It has to improve. Mm. I've heard all that mention on uh, my place in support of men. You know, that's why I keep saying my body stuff. Like, even someone who has the professorship, mm. when the wife dies, we say they have to shave the head, you know, and all these people to humiliate him factors. Mm. Uh, this is the cop, and you have to drink, you know, from that water. Mm. This is you know, it's humanizing. Let's be very much about this. So for me, in terms of benefits from the stuff, the truth is that our state, River State, mm. uh, they are all south south. Mm. It's, uh, it's just unique aspects that makes us different. That's yeah. what we identify with. Yeah. And not necessarily, okay, now, I've been in Lagos for my life. Mm -hmm. My daughter has been born in Lagos. Mm -hmm. You move into Lagos, but you can't hold office in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Even when you are competent, why? They'll tell you are not from here. Mm. We just keep creating the demarcation, and that's where you know we have the problem. We just keep having divided lines, divided lines over time. So we need to look beyond where you are from, where you are from the danger. Let let the best person for this of running. Sorry, I'm being a bit political. I uh, went a bit political about it. It's okay. <laughs> it's all intertwined. It's a structural problem. Yeah. Thanks for calling me, George. Let me talk to Olua Femi. That's the last call, and then that's the end of the glass ceiling today. You say you would definitely take your wife's surname? Yes, definitely I would. Interesting. Uh, because I don't, me in particular, mm. I don't see it as much of a big deal. I don't, I don't, I don't buy the um, whole, um, I'm the man of the house, I'm the head of the house, the wife should subject to me 
she must always do this, always do that. It's my will that that must always be the priority of everything. Okay. You know, I think by that kind of idea, and the thing is, we don't we don't ask questions. I'm kind of happy that we're having this kind of conversation now because we've been passed down all these things for years. Yeah. We try not to ask questions about them. We don't see all of them book line and sinker. Mm-hmm. We don't ask questions at all. Mm-hmm. We don't see this and this is that, and mm-hmm. we just study with them and all sorts. It's like, our culture. It's the way it is. It's our culture. <laughs> I, I think that's so, that's some that's some part of the culture that that just that just that just total to me. I don't buy them. They just total rubbish because I don't see whereby a a man and a woman are coming together and it is the woman that would take the man's son and she loses her own son. But the man doesn't lose his, his own son. You get it? Mm. It's like you're setting yourself down to one person. Whereby the other person doesn't have his thing. Mm. Because it, it, maybe they, they stay around that particular person. Because I don't think it is the law whereby that says a, ma- a woman must take a man's son. I don't think there's a, there's a law about that. Mm. Okay. So There's no law. There really isn't. It's just, um, it's just, I don't know. And to be honest, when we started as a civilization, I'm talking about Africans now, surnames were not a thing, no. You just had one name. You just had one name. That's it. And even the children that were born into a family, they were known as their mother and their father's child. So that's that they they did not say they did not call the child a name and the father's name, right? Thank you for calling me Olua Femi. They did not call the child. Um, uh, so, for instance, I am Sandra as the question, right? If I was born pre-colonization, nobody will call me Sandra as the question. I'll just be Sandra, right? And when people want to refer to me, sometimes they'll refer to me as uh, uh, my mother's child or my father's child. Do you understand? There was no erasure of my mother's name or my mother's identity as part owner of Sandra or part parent of Sandra, the way it is now, right? So, like, we, we, when we say culture, our culture, what is it really? Is it really your culture or is it a culture that was passed down to you as a result of colonization, how many of you go home and ask your grandparents, grand uncles, you know, the ones that will not witch you? Because I know that everybody's afraid of witchcraft and juju. So look for the ones that you trust, you know, if you believe in that sort of thing. And ask questions. How were things before the white men came? Before the white women came? How were things? How did we do things? Thank you for listening to The Glass Ceiling today. Another episode comes your way next week, Wednesday at 4. It's probably going to be the Christmas edition. I can't wait. Whoop, whoop. We're going to do something fun. You know, no serious conversation because it's Christmas. Yeah. So let's have that next week. If you missed today's episode of The Glass Ceiling or you're just joining us, don't worry. An episode, uh, a podcast episode of this will be going up very soon and you can listen. In the meantime, listen to the previous episodes while you wait for today's episode to go up. Coming up, let's talk about immigration on hard facts hard hard facts will be right back